Landon's life was spiced up by the weekly crescendo of his neighbor Julie's intimate escapades. It was a stark contrast to his own solitary existence. But when his vicarious Thursday night thrills suddenly end, Landon wonders not only the reason why, but also who was the man motivating the moaning from downstairs. Landon's investigations turn up some fascinating facts. It turns out that the rowdy romantic responsible for rustling his neighbor's sheets is someone quite surprising indeed. Hey everyone, it's me, your host, Mark Montgomery, and welcome back to another episode, Steamy Stories, where romance turns bromosexual, written by J.C. Calciano, and narrated by me. Today's tale is a mostly true story, as I understand it. It's a sexy story about a hunky college baseball player, his girlfriend, and an old apartment whose floors sorely lacked sound absorption. Sounds definitely carry in this little apartment. But don't worry, though. It's not all bad. In fact, it's kind of hot. And it turns definitely steamy. So, stick around as we discover what happens to the downstairs neighbor in this month's episode titled College Crush. Landon was tall with a sculpted physique that spoke of disciplined mornings spent at the gym. His hair, a rich chestnut, always seemed effortlessly tousled, catching the light as if kissed by the sun itself. His eyes, a striking blue, were the sort that you'd find yourself lost in, not just for their color, but for the intense, thoughtful gaze that hinted at depths yet to be explored. Landon had the rare kind of smile that would surface unexpectedly, but when it did, it was genuine, a rarity that made it all the more captivating. Landon's routine was as precise as the lines of the cars he designed. His passion for his work was evident in the way his eyes lit up whenever he spoke of his latest project, his hands sketching mechanical shapes in the air as if the automobile was right there for you to see. He lived in a modest apartment with a view of the city skyline that he seldom noticed, since he was often engrossed in his craft. On this particular Thursday, Landon glanced at the clock more often than usual. It was as if the minutes were tugging at his attention, each whispering of the impending nocturnal symphony from the apartment below. Julie, his downstairs neighbor, was as much a fixture of the apartment building as the oak tree majestically standing beside the front walk. She was the sort of person who'd often offer a smile when you ran into her at the mailbox, or if you would catch her by the recycling bins, a pleasant conversation would frequently ensue. She was always pleasant, polite, and perky while being remarkably pretty. But Thursday nights unveiled a different side to Julie. At 10 p.m. sharp, her apartment would erupt with an outburst of grunts, gasps, oohs, ahs, sighs, and moans that permeated not only Landon's apartment, but the entire complex as well. These sounds made Landon chuckle in both bemusement and curiosity. Yes, Thursday was a night he looked forward to all week since it brought on quite an amusing collection of sounds. The evening started early, with her dog barking. When it greeted the arriving guest, soon it was followed by the quiet of dinner and light conversation. But then, by 10 p.m. sharp, the evening took a turn towards the passionate. Julie and her male guest engaged in quite intense and loud lovemaking. The session lasted precisely 45 minutes before subsiding into a brief intermission, only to resume with renewed vigor until midnight, when it would cease entirely and, one could only assume, ended in a much-deserved slumber. Ever the gentleman, Landon had no intention of prying or lodging complaints about the sounds. Good for her, he would muse with a chuckle. 
his imagination conjuring the acrobatic scenes that Julie and her beau must have engaged in to warrant such extreme sounds. But what could be going on down there? He wondered. At least someone's having sex, Landon often thought on Thursday nights, a wry smile tugging at the corner of his mouth. It had been ages since he'd been on a date, let alone had a boyfriend. Julie's Thursday night lovemaking was a poignant reminder that life wasn't just about work and the occasional vicarious thrill. I really need to get out more and definitely need to find myself a man, he giggled allowing his thoughts to again playfully wander to the kind of bedroom antics that might be unfolding beneath his floorboards. For several months, Thursday nights had become an auditory adventure for Landon, with each visit seeming to increase in volume and abandon. Julie's partner was a man of few words, communicating instead in a language of primal sounds that spoke to something raw and primal in Landon. Her lover's grunts were a stark contrast to her more vocal screams and sighs, sounds that Landon could only categorize as sheer delight. Then, quite unexpectedly, the Thursday night's symphony ceased. The silence from Julie's apartment was conspicuous, and Landon found himself listening intently for any sign of life. He speculated about the sudden change, Perhaps they went to dinner, or maybe they're enjoying a long weekend away? He pondered, the silence lying heavily in his apartment. Landon was surprised at the void that the absence of noise left in him. He had become an unwitting audience to their private escapades and felt a part of it in some odd, unspoken way. If he wasn't having sex himself... At least he had been enjoying the echoes of theirs. As he settled in for what promised to be a quiet and uneventful evening, he couldn't help but feel a twinge of anticipation for next week, curious about what new chapters Julie's adventures would bring then, if they would resume. Seven days later, the calm of the morning was punctuated by the distant rumbles and metallic clangs of a moving truck outside. Landon, cappuccino in hand, peered out of his front window. Am I getting a new neighbor? He wondered, the thought mingling with the rich aroma of his morning brew. The building had been fully occupied for as long as he could remember. Its residents, a familiar ensemble, and the daily rhythm of his apartment living. But the sight of the moving truck parked out front was a jolt to the routine. Was someone leaving the building? He wondered. The movers, a team of burly figures, worked with an almost mechanical efficiency, ferrying boxes and furniture into the truck with the relentless energy of a colony of ants. Landon's gaze followed each movement, which of my neighbors is moving away? He pondered silently. The thought was tinged with a peculiar sadness. While the prospect of meeting someone new was always an adventure, the bonds formed over shared walls and brief encounters had woven a fabric of familiarity in the building that he wasn't ready to part with. As the moving truck began to swallow the last of the belongings, Landon took a final sip of his cappuccino. He couldn't help but wonder if the departure had anything to do with the absence of Julie's passionate whimpers. The mystery of the silent apartment below lingered in an unsolved puzzle that added a layer of intrigue to the morning's unfolding drama. An additional seven days had elapsed since the departure of the moving truck from the front of the building. By a twist of fate, or perhaps a nudge from the universe's sense of timing, it was Thursday again, the day that had, until recently, been marked by the anticipation of Julie's nocturnal revelries. As Landon made his way to the mailboxes, he couldn't shake the nagging thought 
that Julie might have been the one to vacate the premises a week prior. The silence of the previous week lingered heavily, an unsolved riddle in the air. There he stood, key in hand, a wistful sigh escaping him as he reflected on the end of an era. Julie's Thursday escapades may now just be a memory, and the enigmatic man who had been her partner in pleasure was a mystery doomed to remain unsolved. In this moment of quiet reflection, a voice, deep, resonant, and oddly familiar, pierced the stillness. Landon, is that you? The voice yanked Landon from his thoughts, his eyes darting to the side to meet the source. In an almost laughable twist of fate stood Brian, not three feet away. Landon's heart skipped a beat, and he felt himself make a series of almost comical blinks and gave a bewildered shake of his head. These were his only defenses against the sheer absurdity of the moment. Could it be his college crush standing before him? The sexy baseball player from the dormitory who starred in countless dirty daydreams Landon enjoyed over the last decade. Without warning, this sultry stud now stood within arm's reach of Landon. This was the last place Landon would have expected to see him. Brian looked the same as he did at the university, but dramatically different as well. The young athlete had matured into a vision that would fit perfectly on a Sports Illustrated cover. His physique, once that of a promising athlete, now bore the marks of a man who had honed his body to perfection. Brian's shoulders broadened from what Landon remembered. They now seemed to frame him like the pillars of a Grecian temple. His college crush's face, once boyishly adorable, now carried a rugged handsomeness that was highlighted by a few days' worth of stubble, adding a roguish charm to his chiseled, masculine features. Landon discreetly took in the sight of Brian, trying to maintain a casual air. The years had been more than kind to him. Gathering his wits, Landon articulated a relaxed and informal greeting, his voice a mixture of delight and disbelief. Dude, good to see you. It's been a while. Landon stated flatly, his composure a seemingly well-practiced veneer. What are you doing in California? When did you leave NY? The questions hung in his mind, carrying the weight of a decade's worth of curiosity. Brian's voice was quick to answer in its deep, sexy tone. Equal part stud and grown-up frat boy. Yeah, New York really wasn't for me. I moved out here a few months ago to pursue acting when I met Julie in class. We dated for a few months. She was hot and fun to hang out with, but it sucks because last week she moved away. Back to Ohio. It's over now, but we're still going to be friends. I'm here picking up her mail for her. That is until the post office starts forwarding her mail to her. Landon just stood in quiet shock as his mind processed his thoughts. Brian is the stud who rocked his neighbor's world all those nights? Well, it makes total sense now, but just, geez. I knew Julie was a lucky girl, but I had no idea of just how lucky she was. Landon quickly quieted his inner monologue as he attempted to carry on the conversation with his old friend, as he innocently replied. I had no idea you were in L.A. now, let alone dating my neighbor. Brian was equally surprised to see Landon, and a bit amused as he confessed. Dude, we'd come back to her place every Thursday after class. We must have kept you up all night. She was stupid hot and a crazy moaner, am I right? There was an ease to his admission, a camaraderie between two old college friends. Landon felt the heat flush in his cheeks, a blush he fought to control, 
not wanting to betray the full extent of his thoughts. Yeah, I could hear a bit, but it was fine, he said, managing a casual shrug. Good for you, dude. Brian's laughter filled the space between them, rich and uninhibited. After a brief moment, he continued. Yeah, she mentioned that a cool gay guy lived upstairs. She would say, he could probably hear us, but he won't mind. He confessed, his eyes twinkling with the humor of the situation. Landon was a bit embarrassed at the thought that both Julie and Brian were aware that he was not only able to hear, but possibly listening to their lovemaking. Again, Landon was lost in his thoughts when Brian suddenly snapped him out by saying, Hey, bud, I didn't know you were into guys. All those years across from you in the dorm, and nobody knew you were gay. Landon initially felt a sting from the statement, but quickly recovered and stood a little straighter and more confident. The years of self-acceptance lent him a quiet assurance. Yeah, I came out after graduation. It's all good, he affirmed, his voice steady. Then, with a look that seemed to reassess Landon in a new light, Brian said, That's cool with me. I didn't tell anyone at school I was bi either, so I totally get it. The words were simple, but they struck Landon like a bolt of lightning, his heart thudding erratically against his ribs as he blurted out, Really? Brian's only responses were a sweet, affirming smile and a casual nod. For a quick moment, they simply stood there, the air charged with the electricity of new possibilities. Regaining his composure, Landon casually extended an offer. It was hospitality mingled with a tinge of playfulness. Where are my manners? What are you up to? Would you want to hang out? It's Thursday night. Care to come up for a cold beer? His voice was an invitation to more than just a drink. The broadness of Brian's smile was all the answer Landon needed. It was laden with an understanding that went beyond words. Brian instantly answered. Absolutely. Nothing's better than a cold beer after a Thursday night full of hot sex. Landon smirked as he winked at Brian. Well, I've got an icy six-pack right upstairs with your name on it. Brian laughed and playfully replied, Suddenly, I'm thirsty. As he casually trotted up the stairs toward Landon's apartment. Gee, I wonder if the new downstairs neighbor isn't being kept up by Brian's Thursday night visits to Landon. I can only imagine the racket they get up to. You're listening to Steamy Stories, the podcast where romance turns bromosexual. I hope you enjoyed today's tawdry tale. Next month, I'll be sharing the story that inspired our short film, Super Surprise. Oh, you didn't hear that we turned a few of our stories into short films? Yes, it's true and very exciting. You can see them now on our Steam Room Stories YouTube channel. Give them a watch and let us know what you think in the comments below the videos. More of them are coming your way on the Steam Room Stories YouTube channel, so visit often. Enjoy, and until next month. Later, bro.